You've heard of the four year cycle in Bitcoin, but do you know why this happens and why the pattern will likely continue? Let's mind deep. It's all about the Bitcoin halving. At its core, the halving is a simple event. It's when the reward for mining a new block on the Bitcoin blockchain is cut in half. Meaning in April 2024, the block rewards, which happen every 10 minutes, will reduce from 6.25 Bitcoin to 3.125 Bitcoin per block. Originally, miners received 50 Bitcoin per block, then 25, 12.5, and so on. This event happens every 210,000 blocks, or every four years. Coincidentally, the halving is perfectly aligned with the cycle of the US presidential election just in time when the White House transfers over its power. So why how? You have to remember, you can't print Bitcoin like the government prints money. So Satoshi Nakamoto implemented howlings to prevent rapid inflation, preserving Bitcoin's purchasing power. To ensure that only 21 million Bitcoin will ever be produced, guaranteeing Bitcoin's scarcity and value over time, he built this brake pedal mechanism to control its inflation rate and it also considers technological advancements in computing power, making Bitcoin mining progressively more difficult. Remember, back in the day, you only needed your computer to mine. Because of this method, almost 89% of the total 21 billion Bitcoin are already in circulation. That is 19 million Bitcoin, leaving 2 million left to be mined. And as halvings continue, the rate of new Bitcoin entering circulation will decrease with the last Bitcoin expected to be mined around the year 2140. But relax, because if you're watching this video, you're more likely not to see the last Bitcoin be mined since it'll be in 117 years from now. Once that happens, no more Bitcoins will be mined and miners will have to earn their Bitcoin through transaction fees. Yes, transaction fees will be sufficient to incentivize miners to keep the network secure. You see, recent events in the ordinal space have shown that fee revenues can surpass block rewards, suggesting that that model will work in the future. To truly grasp the impact of the halving, one must look back in time. Historically, Bitcoin has witnessed price surges both leading up to and following each halving. Let's take a look. After Bitcoin's first halving in November 2012, its price rose from $11 to $1,100 within a year, but then fell stayed below $1,000 for several years. The second halving in July 2016, we saw Bitcoin rise from 600 to 20,000 in just 18 months, but then it dropped significantly in 2019. The third halving in May 2020 had Bitcoin priced at about $8,000. By April 2021, it rose to $63,000 and peaked at 69K in December 2021 before falling again. Based on past trends, the Bitcoin price typically rises leading up to the halving, plateaus or slightly drops immediately after, and then shows a significant increase 9 to 15 months later. But why? The answer lies in the economic dance of supply and demand. With a decreasing supply and a steady or increasing demand, prices tend to rise. Unlike traditional assets like gold, where the supply can increase based on the demand, Bitcoin's supply remains fixed. This known and fixed supply makes it easier to model Bitcoin's future performance. The effects of the Bitcoin halving stretch beyond just its price. While central banks around the world can simply print money whenever they want, leading to inflation, Bitcoin's monetary policy is transparent, predictable, and immutable. The Bitcoin halving, a testament to the genius of its design, reinforces the principles that set it apart from traditional currencies, scarcity, decentralization, and transparency. So why should you care? Because the Bitcoin halving event is pivotal in ensuring Bitcoin remains a valuable and scarce resource, drawing similarities to gold. Those investing or participating in the Bitcoin network should be keenly aware of these dynamics. As a decentralized store of value with a cap supply, Bitcoin offers a hedge against fiat instability. So are you ready for the halvening? Don't miss Brian Estes backstage. But when was that it moment that Bitcoin clicked for you? So it was 2014. Mm -hmm. So when I first learned about Bitcoin, I thought it was a scam. I come from traditional finance and um, I saw Cameron and Tyler Winklevoss on CNBC talking about it. 
when it was $100. And I, you know, I just, I thought it was a scam. So I watched it go from 100 to 1200, then it crashed down to 300 when Mt. Gox got hacked. And then I'm a value investor, so I kind of dove into it to figure it out. But when I read the Satoshi Nakamoto white paper, it clicked with me. And I, I just understood as clear as day how we're gonna rebuild our entire financial system on block, blockchain technology. And so that's, that's that was the flick. It was just reading the white paper. What's the craziest reaction you've gotten when you tell people about your love for Bitcoin and that you're into Bitcoin? A lot of people think I'm crazy, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, they just, you know, they, they think, you know, Bitcoiners are kind of nutty or, you know, but I, I just think that we're just early. And you know, we understand something most people don't understand yet. And, you know, our monetary system is being debased by the government just printing more and more dollars. And so, for example, during COVID, the government printed 40% more dollars. And so if you had $1,000 in the bank account three years ago, that could only buy 60 or $600 worth of goods today. So most people are seeing prices go up, but it's really... It's, not, it's really not prices going up. It's the, the fact that those dollars aren't as strong or not as potent as they were before. So it just takes more dollars to buy the same thing. And now speaking of Bitcoin and everything, what is the craziest thing you've used to purchase Bitcoin? Or like that you've bought Bitcoin? So I wouldn't call it crazy, but I learned my lesson about selling Bitcoin. So this was seven years ago. Um, I sold 50 Bitcoin at $1,000 to buy my Mercedes. So, so, so the lesson I learned is just don't sell your Bitcoin. This week we got huge news. The SEC lost its suit with Grayscale over converting its fund into a spot Bitcoin ETF. This has been a years long pursuit for Grayscale. Remember, it has been fighting the SEC's decision and now it has uh, the courts in there. Favor. If you look at the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, this is the main entity that would face a conversion. This is one of the longest standing, largest trusts holding Bitcoin in which retail and institutional investors have been able to gain exposure for many, many years. Hear this, Vivek Ramaswamy, one of the presidential candidates, says that this clears a path for Bitcoin innovation in the US. And not just that, but Bloomberg analysts have now raised their spot ETF approval odds to 75% this year from an earlier 65% prediction. So Grayscale now um, is obviously much closer to converting this thing to an ETF. This definitely caused hashtag fire Gary Gensler to trend on X. Speaking of X, they acquired a Rhode Island currency transmitter license. With this authorization, X may store, transfer, or exchange digital assets within its platform as well as maintain those assets on behalf of others. This furthers Elon's plan to make X the everything app, much like WeChat in China. And Robinhood was just revealed to be the third largest Bitcoin holder with 3 billion in Bitcoin. This is perfect, so perfect, Miss El Salvador is over there orange pilling Miss Universe and Miss Aruba. I'm orange peeling Miss Universe, Miss Universe Aruba. They're going to download wallet of Satoshi so you guys can send them yeah. some sets. That's true. They're on mine. Yeah, Courtney put them on hers. Remember, keep building that Bitcoin stack.